action. Okay, so we're gonna go over some things in order of what I think is like most confused and most uh, misunderstood, and then uh, at the end we'll talk about questions and we can just go over examples and anything. Um, so we're gonna do picks, throwing fouls, receiving fouls, and stall count and how it is affected by those those calls. Um, so, I read the rule book this morning. <laughs> Total expert at this. Total expert at this. Uh, picks. Picks are defined any time a defensive player has to avoid or makes contact with or has to avoid another player because of them guarding, because of the way you're guarding the offense. So if you're guarding somebody and they're running around like crazy, you should be able to just focus on staying with them. You shouldn't really have to pay attention to like where their other players are. That's his job. The offensive player's job is to not run you through picks. Okay? So as a defensive player, the way I like the way I basically call picks is I just try to focus all of my energy on guarding the guy. And if anything takes me out of that mindset, if I'm running and I have to jump, then I have to like, I have to go, whoa, or like, if I even make any contact or anything, it's just, as soon as I snap out of that focus on the, the player I'm guarding, that's, that's my pick. You don't have to actually, you don't have to actually run anything. Yeah, yeah. If you even just have to like, swerve or slow down. Or anything, because you, I mean, you, you still have to be safe. You don't want to run into anybody, so obviously you're gonna be aware of where you're running. If you have to slow down at all, or <clears throat> um, yell, pick as loud as you can. <laughs> People will echo it, um, and then what happens after that is you get to regain the relative lost position, which means kind of misunderstood in the game. You don't just get to catch back up completely. If you weren't I mean, if you're on them and then they run you off a pick and they go off that way, then yeah, you get to go back to where you were relative to them at the time the pick occurred. But if you're trailing behind him a little bit and he runs over past Nick there and I have to kind of like, I mean, that, that's a pick, pick, but then when I come, I still only get the relative distance that I lost. So I go back to the position that I was well, when the pick came. You don't go straight up and like, call the pick so I get an automatic, you know, all over you. And you kick up to wherever he is, and now he goes back to the pick and call. Do you ever get a choice in that? That's what I want. I, I pretty, the rule is stated you get to regain relative lost position. So, whatever you guys decide. Yeah, I think it's like, yeah. a lot of the time it just works out to be the cutter will want to stay there. Unless the cutter has like run away, you know, has like completely used the pick as an opportunity to make a cut and has ended up, you know, 15 yards away from you. And it's like, no, nah, man, it was a pick. You got to come back here. But sometimes, I mean, as a defender, you're also going to be kind of gaming it a little bit, like, what's to my advantage? Do I want him to come back into the middle of the stack, or do I want him to kind of go out into some space where maybe I think I could beat him one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering, so if someone has, if, if any of them has a choice, it would be the defender that would get to say, you come back here, or I'll go there? Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because the defender made the call, I think the defender made the choice. After you call a pick, after you call a pick, it's not like a foul. Not everything doesn't come to a standstill. A pick isn't actually a pick until the thrower recognizes it as such. So the thrower is still so engaged in what they're doing that you've called pick, your teammates have echoed it. I mean, you're going to want to say it more than once. Like, you don't just want to do pick. And I'm like, oh, I called pick. That's kind of a jerk move. Like, you've got to call it out loud. you got to help. Like, your teammates should help echo it. Um, but the play doesn't actually stop until the thrower acknowledges pick. I'm stopping. Okay. Then regain. You know, come back to your position. W where that comes in really uh, handy is that, or, or it hurts people, is that the thrower sometimes, and as the thrower, if you don't hear the pick call, it is still a live disc. If you throw it away, it's still a turnover. So as a defender guarding somebody that has just run a pick and you've fallen off and maybe the thrower thinks, oh, that person's open now, you still want to go try to D it because you can D that and it's a turnover. It's still alive. Um, uh, you also want to talk about spacing. Like if you're too far away, you can't 
Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's three meters, yeah, I think ten feet. So ten feet is gonna be like we should measure each other and see where it's like it. You have to be one Tyler away. <laughs> so, and this happens a lot. I mean, 10 feet is not very far in defense. You will find yourself this far off of your person quite often. And most of the time you're gonna get away with calling a pick because, because you're dragging behind, they've come across the field, and they've made a cut, which is then, you know, while they're cutting that way, you're not just gonna wanna cut, you know, to that where they cut and then over, you're gonna try to cut them off. You're gonna, if he's cutting back in, I'm gonna try to come this way. And then if I run into somebody, you know, and I'm 10 feet off of him, that's not really a pick, because he had, he had me beat. But you will find that in practice, you get away with that 95% of the time. As long as you're not 20 feet away, um, picks usually go, picks are usually um, upheld in that way. Um, I have a question. Questions about picks. What happens if the pick is like not directly affecting the play, and say you're in the end zone and the offense throws it, the person with the disc throws the disc before recognizing the pick, and they catch it in the end zone? What happens? Good, good question. Um, it will stand. The, the, the completion stands if the pick was deemed to have not affected the play in any way. So if, if you if, if it wasn't the person that you were guarding that caught it, or it wasn't the person that you ran into, or you know, I mean, if it's just something off to the side, and you say pick, another reason to keep trying on defense, because if you completely stop, and your guy just like walks over here and catches an easy goal, that didn't affect the play, that's still, that's still a goal. Okay. So, what if you were close enough where like you saw the throw coming, and if you could have just ran over there, you could have beat it really easily, but you got if, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's what it's about. Yeah. He was saying if he was you a random have to player, not the pick player. No, you don't have to prove it. You, if you were the one that called the pick and you think you could have made a play on the disc if you hadn't gotten the pick, then it goes back. Just because you if, said if it's not or the even player, if you're guarding. You, so. No, no. But if, you, if you called the pick and you could have made a play. Or even if you're guarding the person who created the pick, you know, like if, if John runs around Nick, on Nick's on his team and I'm guarding Nick, and the hit, John's guy calls the pick, you know, but then I think I could have made a play on John, that still affected the play. You know, I mean, like, if it all came together, we're all the people that were affected by the play. So that happened with the picture, I remember someone said they could have gotten it over and beat it, but they were like halfway across the field and they're like, I don't think well, you could have. Well, it's what a lot of people do sometimes, when they hear the pick call, they stop running. And that's because of the way the rules used to be. And so, you know, basically people in their minds, they hear pick and they just stop, even though the play is still live, and if they kept on going, they could have gotten, gotten the D. Uh, but because they weren't directly affected by the pick, it doesn't count. You have to be directly affected by the pick in order to force the disc to do that. And can you talk about that? Like, I always feel like the, I don't know when, where the disc goes back. Like, sometimes like, oh no, it goes back to him. No, it goes back to him. Like, if, if, I mean, if the disc was in somebody's hands, if, if it, you get the one continuation, the continuation rule counts so that if it, if it, if it is passed up field or wherever to a player that was not affected by the pick, the disc stays with that person and then stops. It can't progress past that. But, um, and the pick was called when the first thrower threw it to the Yes. If the pick is called, as soon as the pick is called, at, from the moment the pick is called, you get one continuation to a player not affected. If it goes to a player that was affected, that doesn't count, it goes back to the player. So even if you hear the pick and you know it, you can choose to make one continuation to someone who's not involved? You can. That is, that is in the rules, yes. So if I had the disc, you called a pick that I didn't recognize it, I could throw it to it? Yeah, your okay. dump, if your dump defender like just felt to, to, you know, stopped guarding and you wanted to get rid of the disc, you could just like... And then it's, that's not it's, it's generally considered. <laughs> That's um, what we call the dick. It's generally <laughs> considered, yeah, polite. To, as soon as you hear the pick, acknowledge it so that everybody can stop. Okay. Um, yeah. So when a pick is called, you really just want the thrower to hear it, and you still need to play. Yeah. Until you, hear, until until you see the thrower either like raise their hand or call a pick himself. Okay. Three. Throwing fouls. So being fouled while you have the disc or while you are throwing. So, this is the one situation where 
incidental contact uh, is always the mark. It's almost like if you get any, if you get touched at all, the only time it's not a foul on the marker is if it's body, my body going into his body. If I come down like that, that's a foul on me. But if I come across like this and he's too close and he hits my arm, if my arm and leg extended away from my body, that's not. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's arms and legs extended away from the midline of the body are not, consi uh, that's considered foul on the mark. Even if I'm completely stationary? Yeah. If you're, yeah, if you're completely stationary, then yeah, you, you can't move into any space that's already occupied. So that, yeah, if you're just standing there and you're coming across, that's not a foul on John. But if, but what happens, what, most of the time the marker is moving. So when you come over, he's gonna kind of come over with me, or you know, and, and that that'll be a foul. So and the disc also counts. So if you come across and he like he hits the disc or something, that's a foul too. Um, well, actually, you put your arms out there like you're marking. I feel like when it's called, it's not like it's on the body. Nice. Yeah. So if it comes across, or yeah, he comes across and reaches out. Any any part of his body that reaches out, touches you or the disc, that's a foul. So you want to call it, like let's say you make it through, there's incidental contact. What are the consequences if you call a foul and it gets caught? It, yeah, it'll stay. It's, so when in doubt, it's generally a good idea if there's contact to maybe consider. You should always call the foul on <laughs> You, a, I mean, yeah, no. The, a good like mental rule is just try to get in the habit of calling a foul the moment it happens just to avoid any discrepancies or anybody being able to say like, whatever, you call the foul and then you continue to throw it. Like get in the habit of, of just as soon as it happens, foul. But until that gets, until you get to that point, it is okay to, to turn and, and throw it and then say foul. Yeah, because like a lot of times when you're in the ball, you don't necessarily feel the contact. Yeah, but a, and a lot of the times what people get really mad at is if you throw the disc, throw the disc and you think you got bumped and you throw it and then Nick drops it and then you go foul <laughs> you know? and they're like dude you like waited to see if it was a completion before you call the foul like that's not very fair you know like if you think it's a foul call it because if he catches it, it it continues um and it's, it's also a foul if john is like more or less like grinding <laughs> yeah. Because sometimes I've been there and like a girl just be like, oh, I'm big, and I'm like, ah. like well, I see, I see this a lot where like they'll have disc space with the hips, but they'll lean in like this. Yeah. That's disc space. Yeah. That's Any it. part of the defender's body has to be a <laughs> disc space. <laughs> yeah. So I mean that, that, and that's a legal position. Once he gets into a legal position, then he's good. He has that space. I can't go into him, but he's going to be moving a lot. Yeah. He's going to be moving a lot. So when he's moving, even when, if he's bouncing to the side and, and you're both going for the same space and you hit, that's a foul on him. Now when you're receiving a pass, that's not the way it works. If two people are vying for the same unoccupied space, that's incidental contact and not a foul. But, yeah, I mean, if two people are reaching out for a disc together and they they're bumping their arms together and, and they both miss it like this, not a foul. Um, Can we go back to the marking ones? Yeah. Like, so if, if my hand gets hit and I call a foul, where does the stall come from? The stall count, uh, if it's a foul, an uncontested foul comes in stalling. If it was a contested foul, it goes, it goes to where it was if it was less than five. And if it was more than five, it comes in stalling six. Okay, so even, so if you get fouled on nine and, and they say, no, I'll contest, it still goes down six. Slightly frustrating part of some of the stall count rules um, that I was going to talk about at the end more stall count. So, so typically what happens is you say you go stall one, stall two, they call a violation. You're supposed to go back, you, you were at two, you're supposed to go back to zero, but then your next count's going to be one. So I, so I, I, I think subtract one, you're going to subtract two. So I would 
Stall yeah. one, stall two. Displace. Stall two, stall one. Instead of going from two to three, I went from two to one. Well, what happens when, like, This space, this space, and like hold it out yeah, in front of them. I know. So then, like, if I call the S, I'm like, I'm not going back. In you can call and violation. Call. You can call a violation. If, if somebody is is misunderstanding the rules, it's generally considered spirit of the game that if there is just a straight misunderstanding of the rules, that it's okay to call violation. Stop. Explain the rule to the person. Like that. That's that's within the framework of the rules of the game that it should be explained to somebody before you just start taking advantage of that person. Um, but, that. If, but if it was over, um, this space was called at stall 9, is it go back to 5? No, no, no. It's, that's we'll go back. Yeah. yeah, same thing with fast count. Same thing with fast count. It goes down too. So stalling 6, stalling 7. Fast count. Fast count. Stalling 6, stalling 7. Yeah. And like coming in at like coming in at five really means you're gonna say stall six. Yeah, if it says coming in on five or something, or if you ever say same thing with the pick, the pick happens and it happened on stalling three, stalling four, pick. So and you didn't get to say the stalling part next. You would say you'd already done four. So you'd say we're coming in on four, and then you would sit start by saying stalling five. get fouled it's this is like the biggest gray area I think in ultimate like there is always contact if you're playing tight V on somebody and you're going up where you're jumping for a disc there's always contact it's not always a foul you shouldn't always call a foul there's probably some interpretation of the rules that could make it a foul but I just have a, my own personal rule is I just like to kind of gauge what I think I should catch and what I think I was a difficult move to make if I think I should have caught something and I don't because somebody pushed me or my arm got pushed down, then, then that's a, a foul. Even if my arm does get pushed down, but let's say the disc was over here and this arm gets pushed down and I still think I should have made the catch, I'm probably not going to call the foul. Um, yeah, just because it's so, the rule is any Non-incidental contact is a foul. So, non-incidental, I mean, what's incidental or what's non-incidental when you're both running full speed, going for the same point in space? You know, like, non-incidental would be, or incidental would be like, like clipping your feet together as you're running side by side. Like, it's inevitable, it's gonna happen. Um, if it's like as you go up for the disc and they come up behind you and kick your feet, like even if it was an accident, accident doesn't necessarily mean non-incidental. Like he was coming up on your body into your space, and that's a foul. If you're running side by side and, and you, you clip heels or something, like that, that's incidental. Like you were both just trying to get to an unoccupied space. If you already occupy the space and then they come into you, then that's a foul. So like, I got a question. How about someone who lay out dudes in front of me? As like, let's say we're both running for the disc and someone lays out and they like go in front of me to get to the disc on the other side of my body. Yeah. It happens, like people, because people though? like, as the disc is in front of you, uh -huh. a lot of the times they're going to be hitting your hip. They're going to be coming across your hip and they're your almost arm. certainly going to be hitting yeah. your arm yeah. as they come through to try to get the disc. If somebody makes a sick layout D past you, like... Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, like, like you, you can kind of think about it, like, say the disc is here. If they actually lay out and get the disc before you were there, they actually got that space, got that space first. Whereas if the disc was in your hand, and then they knocked it out. That's just true. That's well, well, or, or, or even if they hit your like, Or even if they hit your arm, yeah, your arm was about to go to the disc, and they hit your arm away. Right. And, and, but, and then got it. That would be a, a foul. Like, but they didn't get to the disc first, they got to the Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. But, it, Although but it, you're going to be like, what the hell just happened? Yeah. I just saw somebody lay out yeah. in front of me. Yeah, and the same thing when you're, when you're jumping for a disc. Two people jumping for a disc, you're going for that unoccupied space that the disc is in. So, or it's occupied by the disc, I suppose. So, if you're both going for it, 
um, and they get to the disc, but then they simultaneously are up on your body like that. You know, if, if they knock the disc away, then not, that's not really a foul. But what if they like hit your arm and it kind of like messes you up? And you catch it? Yeah, I mean, if they that's hit your arm, if they if they they're reaching over you or something, because there's also the principle. Yeah, what's the, what's last thing, last thing I'm gonna say, the principle of verticality means that you are entitled to the space directly above your torso. So if the disc is coming straight down on top of you, and you know, I'm usually just gonna do like that. But, <laughs> but if you're not me, then you're probably gonna have to jump. And if you jump, yeah, we gotta go. Um, you know, people shouldn't be able to go up over you to get it. If they go up over you and don't touch you at all, it's not a foul. But if they go up over you and, and bump you even a little bit, or, 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 or contact your arms on the way up, then that means... But if you just jump straight up and go over their head, then it's yeah. fine. What if they grab the disc before they touch you, and it's above you? Then I think that the disc was not there, and you... I don't think it's foul. Yeah. If the disc is no longer catchable, then... Then you hit them. If, if as a result of like reaching over them, you like basically cause your momentum to come down directly on that person. Then that's a dangerous play. I, I mean, mean that like, sucks. People, you yeah, know, I do it to people all the time. Like, <laughs> 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 all right, we gotta go.